Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you so much for stopping by. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a spiritual weapon. Now this is something that started as an as needed item. Basically, my youngest son has a spiritual weapon option and he wanted one on the table and we didn't have one. So I literally took a Playmobil sword, some garden stones and some floral wire and hot glue and made up this guy. All right, so this is how the spiritual weapon started and it works out really well. It's very functional, it's great. However, I thought it'd be fun to give it a little twist and make it look a little bit more magical and give it a lighting feature. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take that concept and turn it into this. So stay tuned, make sure you watch it. Any questions, please feel free to ask me down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you need to, you can also email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. So for now, that's it for me and I'll see you later. Bye. Now, while these are very specific supplies, a lot of these get reused often in my videos, so I do recommend that you get these. Again, make sure to check below for the links because they will come in handy so you can order these if you cannot find them locally. A quick note on this nail polish. This is a nail polish I found at Dollar Tree, and I actually do prefer using this for this particular project because I liked the final effect. You can substitute in a silver metallic or really a metallic of any color of your choice if you'd rather. That's perfectly fine. The first thing you're going to want to do is harvest a weapon from a cheap mini. Now this is a mini that comes in one of those tubes from Amazon. This is the Knight's Collection. I'll make sure the link is there as well. And what I did is just took a pair of wire cutters and I cut the weapon off as well as the gauntlet from the mini itself. Then what you want to do is take a strand of floral wire. You're going to wrap that around the wrist of the gauntlet. Make sure it's nice and tight and then you're going to twist the wire so that the two strands become one. The next thing you want to do is take apart your tea light so that you have the top separated from the base. For now, just put the base to one side. We're going to be working with the top portion. You first want to wrap the bottom of the wire around where the bulb of the LED is. So get that wrapped around and then just take a tiny dollop of hot glue to secure it in place. Then what you want to do is take that hot glue and in this case you want to make sure you have your silver glitter glue stick, yes, in place. And what you're going to do is put that silver hot glue around where you have the wire as well as around the base of the gauntlet and then you're going to bring it down the wire itself and swirl it around the base a little bit just to kind of get that hot glue to act as a way to secure it in place. Once this set, this is going to stay in place. It is extremely secure. Still using that silver sparkly hot glue stick, you're going to want to get a bowl of cold water and your hot glue gun for this next part. Now this is a concept that hopefully will be handy for you. It's another option for creating shapes with your hot glue without having to use parchment paper or my go-to of glass and a thin film of aquaphor. What you are going to do is hold your glue gun up high over the water and let it drip into the water and just move it around to swirl it. The closer you get to the water, the thicker the strands are going to be. The further away you get, the thinner the strands will be. It cools very quickly and it's one of those things where you want to play around with it a little bit and you'll get a feel for how this works. Really just freehand it, go with the flow of it quite literally and you'll see these shapes taking form as you move along. Now when you are done making your shape, all you have to do is lift it up out of the water. I place it on a paper towel for maybe less than a minute and they're dry and ready to go. Once they are ready, what you need to do is take a pair of scissors and just snip out these shapes that you feel would give that swirling magic-like flair to your piece. And again, this is using your artistic eye in this case. Just snip away what you feel will be visually interesting in this matter. Now to add these swirls onto the base, it's very simple. Keep using that silver glitter glue and you're going to put a dollop onto the top part of that LED light and add on a swirl. And what I do recommend is you sort of take a squared approach to it. So when you put one swirl on one side, match it on the other side with a different swirl and then counterpoint that by making sure halfway through you have another swirl on the middle point and then one opposite of that. So if you look at it from the top, you would basically have four swirls where if you were to meet them up, they'd make a square like shape. So just keep building these swirls onto the top portion of the base. One tip though with this, make sure you leave 
leave some flat spots so that your thumb and your pointer finger can grip the top part of the base without smushing anything down. This is key for attaching it to the bottom battery pack. To continue with the visual interest of this piece, what I did is I took the icicle strands that have this tinsel on them as well. You're going to separate the icicle strand from the tinsel. It's very easy, you just unwind the two from each other. Make sure you have a good length of that tinsel strand. And then what it is, I just snipped out some of the icicles themselves. What I did first is put these icicles onto the top portion of the base. Again, make sure you keep this towards the upper portion. You don't want this where your fingers are going to need to grip the base to get it onto the battery pack. At this point, what you want to make sure you do is test that you can actually put the upper and the bottom portions of the LED light together easily without either breaking a piece off or having pieces in the way. Because it's at this point where it's easier to remove a swirl or two if needed than it will be later on down the line. So just make sure everything's in working order and again that you can twist things on and off of each other with ease. Here is where the tinsel is going to come into play. What you want to do is first take the bottom battery pack part of the LED light and you're going to put a bead of hot glue around the outside base of it and you're going to add a strand of tinsel around it. If you want to have it a little bit fluffier then add a couple strands of the tinsel around and it's just going to help mask that plastic part of the LED bulb. And then what you'll do is to the upper portion of the LED light you're also going to add tinsel where there is exposed plastic parts from the LED light again. The good thing about this tinsel is that it can be manhandled. You can smoosh it around and everything like that and it will still hold its shape after you're done. So don't worry about covering up those areas where you do need to grip because this is going to mask them but also add to the final look of this piece when done. And again, just really quick, make sure you test it out to be sure everything's in working order. And this is pretty much the last step that you're going to be using the hot glue gun. Now to finish off this look and make sure that your weapon is not the actual color of the mini, this is where that bottle of nail polish is going to come into play. And again, you can use a different metallic acrylic if you so choose. What I did is basically sort of a dry brush technique with this nail polish. Now because it is nail polish, it has a different consistency and way of drying. So what you're fine is it's going to give this a more mottled metallic look when done. And yes, you are going to have some of that black showing through underneath, which I really like the look of. So if for some reason your miniature does not have a black base, then you will need to quickly give this a black base before moving on to the metallic color. And if you have also opted to include the helmet like I did, what you're going to want to do is make sure you paint the helmet first, let it dry, and then attach it with either a dollop of hot glue or E6000 to keep it in place on your miniature. But once everything is dried, this pretty much wraps up the look for the spiritual weapon. One thing I did want to stress about this build is that you can even keep this off of its battery pack and it will function on its own without the light feature. So you get a couple options here. You can have it looking like it is here in the picture or you can attach it to the base and have it all glowing and mystical with the color changing lights and it really does add an enhancement to the table and add to the magical effect of having this weapon out there in the middle of battle. So I hope this is something that you have liked the look of. I hope it's something you can make your own. If you end up creating one of these, I would always love to see what you've done. You can email it to me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like this video make sure to hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so as always thank you so much for joining me and have a great one all right take two oh audio is gonna be interesting on that one by working on the forest. I don't know why I do that. I need help. The printer is going to be going for this whole thing. There is no way to fix that. Not going to fix that. We have a print that needs to get done in a certain amount of time. So that's the woo that you're hearing. So yeah, you can you can handle that, right? It's mesmerizing.
I don't know. Woo! I speak in 3D. Speak in the 3D? I do. You know it's bad when it starts going <laughs> jam. <laughs> Fun. Remember, 3D printer, good tool. Great for crafting. I wholly support them. <laughs>